I'm delighted to be introducing a titan of the pipeline inspection industry, Mr. Uli Schneider. Building on a master's in mechanical engineering from the University of Hanover, Uli has been inspecting pipelines since before I was born and remains a prominent and well-respected voice in our industry. He now serves as business development manager at KTN, part of the Rosen Group in Bergen. This presentation focuses on KTN's flexible tethered Biodye self-propelled inspection tool for challenging pipelines with a combination of measurement technologies, including crack detection. Uli will join us for a live discussion after his pre-recorded presentation, which will begin now. Thank you for the introduction. Hello together. I'm happy to have the chance to present on the virtual pipeline summit. My topic is Intelligent Solutions for Crack Inspection of Challenging Offshore Pipelines, Latest Developments and Case Study. We know that pipelines are the safest, most efficient and environmentally friendly means for the transport of large quantities of liquids and gas and mixtures. However, just as with any other technical component, pipelines can deteriorate with time and eventually fail. So we know the pipeline network worldwide is aging. It has to be carefully managed to maintain the integrity. This means an accurate measurement of the physical condition is mandatory because pipelines must be operated safely with no accidents. They must be always available, of course, no unplanned shutdowns. They have to be economically operated. And in addition, the operator has to make sure that they are compliant to the local regulation. So to prevent failures and accidents, pipeline inspections are mandatory around the world. Therefore, normal long distance pipelines are typically inspected with so-called intelligent picks already starting with a baseline survey after laying and later in regular intervals with caliper tools for geometry, with magnetic flux tools for corrosion, with ultrasonic tools for corrosion and wall thickness and also for crack detection and liquid lines, with EMA tools for crack detection and gas lines. However, pipelines have to be pickable for these conventional tools and traps must be in place on both ends. Here you can see some examples for typical unpickable pipelines or let's say pipelines which were not designed to be inspected. We see loading lines, offshore lines, offloading lines, interfield and flow lines and kind of short pipelines, risers, flexible risers and so on. The market for the pipeline inspection is more than 4 million kilometer high pressure pipelines worldwide. Experts estimate that about 50% of the network is unpickable or difficult to inspect. The reason for being unpickable could be due to design, operation condition, the medium or a combination. Typical challenges for inspection tools are accessibility, for example, subsea launching or receiving, or negotiability, that means the passage of tricky installations, or propulsion, uh, some pipelines are operated with very high or low pressure. Also, the flow could be fast, too fast for the ILI tools, or too slow, or even no flow. So the area, what is completely unpickable, what is pickable, however, not inspectable, or what is difficult to inspect is varying over time. In general, due to higher flexibility of tools, less pipelines are unpickable or not inspectable today. With higher investments, more modifications on the tools or on the pipelines or both more can be inspected. I will not touch MFL or conventional ultrasonic tools for wall thickness and crack detection. I will only uh, explain the TOFT principle. TOFT stands for time of flight diffraction. It is typically used for inspection of wells and can be easily used for pipes from outside. 
it is not possible to use it with a conventional pick from inside because for the measurement of a girth weld, for example, the tool has to stop in the exact right position to scan. This can be done only with a tethered tool, with a crawler, when we have real-time data. Here we can stop the tool exactly in the best position and scan. For the measurement, a pair of transducers is used in a pitch and catch configuration, working with longitudinal waves at a transmission angle of 70 degree. One is the transmitter, the other one the receiver. Wideband UT signals are sent from the transducer and the signals or echoes are received by the receiver sensor. The first signal is visible uh, which comes first from the lateral wave. This is, let's say, the shortcut from the reducer to the receiver. We can see the signals as the green line on the bottom of the picture on the left. The last signal coming is echo from the back wall. If there are no other echoes between, then there are no cracks. If there is a crack, then the crack tips will create diffraction waves here visible in the middle between the lateral and back wall wave. With this method, the quantitative depth sizing of cracks is possible. When there are no traps installed, however, access from one side via flange is possible, the solution is a bidipick pick which can be pumped in and out. If there is no flow, no pumping pick possible, the solution is a self-propelled crawler tool, typically a tethered bidite tool, sometimes a robotic pre-programmed tool. Here, I will explain the basic principle of such a tethered self-propelled inspection tool. This tool is typically prepared tailor-made. In most cases, there are one or two crawlers in the front, followed by project-specific modules, for example, for geometry and wall thickness, corrosion measurements, and or crack detection. A camera could be installed optionally if the product is clear. In addition, data storage and electronic modules complete the tool. The tool is connected via a cable coming from a winch with a control unit, the cable has four functions to bring the energy to the tool to transfer the data in real time to the control unit, to control the movement of the crawler, and last not least, as a safety line. If the crawler cannot move anymore and the tool would get stuck, it can be pulled back with up to two tons. The main differences between a conventional free swimming tool um, and a unidirectional pump tool and tethered ILI tools are the following. Conventional tools go from A to B and get their pressure for the propulsion via its cups or discs. The sensor carrier is typically flexible. The KTN tethered bidai tool has no cups or discs and a lot of bypass. It is very light, made by titanium and is running on wheels. The sensor carrier is a stiff ring. The main purpose for the light tools and the wheels is to require only very little pulling forces and have nearly no friction in order to be able to inspect longer sections, even through many bands. Another differentiation against conventional tools is that we need big winches to do the job. On the left side, you see a relatively small one for one kilometer. The longest ones are sufficient for up to 12 kilometer. However, we also have solutions to inspect up to 24 kilometer. However, quite often the bends are the limiting factor. Other vendors um, can handle three to four um, 90 degree bends. KTN has successfully done 12 times 90 degree. However, all the diameter of the line and the configuration of the bends plays a role. This picture shows crawlers and tractors in different sizes. On the left, for 6 inch and 8 inch. On the right, 10 to 18 inch. In the middle, 20 inch and up. They are all wheel driven. You will see how that works in the following animation. <clears throat> 
The tool operation and data collection are controlled by high performance computers providing real time uh, data and color images of the inspection results. That means with this tool, you will even detect severe defects during the run. The tool operator starts and stops the tool and switches from forward to backward within short time. The tool collects high resolution data on the forward and backward run. <clears throat> this is an overview of all technologies KTN can offer at the moment with its multi-technology tool. Mainly it is used for ultrasonic wall thickness measurement, which means pulse echo, vertical beam, more and more people also ask for crack detection, where we use the share wave technology or with other name creeping wave angular beam. Then we offer another UT technology TOF, time of flight for quantitative sizing of cracks in circumferential and axial direction. And also magnetized eddy current. We can use for all projects in a clear medium as water a camera in addition. And finally, we have even done first repairs with this tool with a grinding unit to grind out internal cracks and girth weld penetration. Now we will start with a case study. Uh, some flow lines in the Asgard field in the North Sea with 13% chrome steel had sacrificial anode pads at every 100 meter as cathodic protection. Shortly after commissioning already, the operator found two leaks created by circumferential cracking starting at the toe of the fillet weld of the pads. The failure mechanism was investigated. A lot of NDT tests were done. Reason for the failure was hydrogen charging from the cathodic protection system causing hydrogen induced stress cracking. The conclusion was more accurate and reliable ILI inspections were required. Uh, in this picture, you can see an anode pad and the area where the circumferential cracks were found. So the task was now to find these kind of cracks reliable and provide accurate depths and lengths of these cracks. Looking at existing tools and technologies available and suitable for this project, one could say there are useful bi-dive free swimming UT wall thickness and crack tools. However, that would mean two runs and still no ideal uh, sizing possible. In addition, the operator had already used the KTN bi-dive tethered UT wall thickness and TOF tool, uh, both in one run. Looking at the table, we can see the advantages and limitations of both crack technologies. Pulse echo share wave is ideal for the probability of detection, has a low threshold, and can measure very fast. Depth sizing is very limited. TOF technology is very good in depth and length sizing. The combination would be ideal. Therefore, it was decided to build a combined tethered tool. The combined tether tool was built and thoroughly tested in a test spool with many artificial notches and fatigue cracks, which were created with a rotating rig. The tests were done as blind tests for KTN and the operator. The actual size was afterwards found out by NDT testing. The POD and sizing of the combined technologies was excellent. Therefore, the next step was the actual live inspection run in the offshore line. Here, the quite long tool is prepared for launching. We can see that the conditions on platforms are typically a bit more difficult. The space for additional equipment is often very limited. In this case, the winch only had space on the upper deck. The cable was guided by many wheels to the launching position. On the bottom right, you can see the stuffing box, the cable penetration. And now we can try to start the video. What you see is the tool running here, passing girth welds. You see the different modules. And the tool is now going to the end of the pipe, to the manifold. And then data are downloaded, and the tool is 
going backwards, uh, will again store data. And here, in this case, the tool will stop at all the girth welds in the exact right position and do the scan with a toft measurement. So we'll uh, see all the circumferential girth welds. I will stop the video already here. So we can say after the successful run, we could summarize the benefits, low costs for launching, receiving, just one mobile trap used, no subsea launching or receiving, no costs for pumping required, no expensive supply vessels, ROV or divers. Four technologies were used in one run, geometry, wall thickness, crack detection and sizing with shear wave and toft. This was a fast and safe solution for quantitative crack depth measurement. Data were showed in real time. A first report was already handed over at site. The amount of unpickable pipelines can be reduced by modifying the pipeline or the intelligent pick or both. Modifying the pipeline can be expensive, especially offshore or is hardly possible. Rosen KTN have many technologies and tailor-made procedures in their toolbox and can offer experience in many fields. A part of the unpickable pipelines can be inspected with free swimming picks if they are modified for bidai use. If there are no pumping facilities on both ends of the pipeline, self-propelled bidai autonomous or tether tools are the smartest and cheapest solution in many cases. For crack detection and quantitative sizing, the combination of shear wave and TOF technology is ideal and can be done in one run, even together with geometry and wall thickness measurement with KTN Rosen's tethered tool. Thank you for joining this presentation. Now it is time for questions. Hi, uh, Yuli. Thank you very much for the presentation. How are you, sir? I'm fine. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> it was good. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, yes, to the audience, please send in your questions just now um, after that interesting presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with one, if that's all right, really. It's, it's fantastic to see four different techniques being used in, in one tool. Um, what, what does the reporting look like when you're uh, amalgamating four different techniques like that? Yeah, of course, we have um, yeah some reporting for all these technologies uh, and we typically use the uh, POF, the Pipeline Operator Forum standards for all these reporting for wall thickness and for cracks. And um, of course, we can align everything so we see everything in one place. Uh, so that's ideal for the operator to have everything in one. So much better than to have separate runs and then to uh, bring all these um, data together. So we have already everything in, in one run and in one line and in one report and everything is aligned already. Of course, if the operator has some special standards for reporting, we are flexible, and uh, but we have to know it before. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. And I was hoping you could talk me through the, the stuffing box. I guess that's what allows you to introduce the tether, but without breaking containment? Yeah, um, I think the, the stuffing box is, of course, something we bring. So typically, we only have, a, yeah, let's say, a trap, um, sometimes a, a temporary trap with just a, a flange. And uh, then we um, typically have a flange with a, a big blind flange with a, with a hole where we mount the stuffing box. And this is uh, even pressure tested, although we typically have um, or work with uh, no pressure or sometimes only pressure from a tank, uh, maybe 10, 12 meter oil level, something like this. But it's in general, it's uh, tested for up to 120 bar. But as I said, typically we, we uh, work uh, in an, um, like, uh, let's say operation or condition like um, no, uh, no pressure. Huh? Yeah. Great, thank you. And I guess offshore, we always need to 
consider what would happen in, in the event of a general platform alarm. So if if the tool is in the, the line on the tether and uh, and there's a general alarm, is it safe to to leave the system in the pipeline and, and get to the muster points? Uh, yes, in general, yes. I think maybe I can say something about the the artics uh, of this tool. Um, actually, we can say we have some winches uh, with uh, ATEX, uh, but uh, we typically place the winch a little bit, um, yeah, let's say, away from the launching um, uh, site. Uh, but the tool itself is dead when we launch it, and only when we have closed the, the trap and filled the trap with 100% uh, with oil and there's no um, air in it, then we switch the tool on. And then, of course, it's no more um, um, safe, but I think it's safe because we have no air in the trap. And then when we uh, arrive again in the trap with the tool, then we switch the tool off. And then we can uh, empty the, the trap and everything is safe again because the tool is dead. So at any uh, point we can leave um, the, the stuffing box and the cable and the tool inside uh, without any problems. Yeah. Perfect. And um, let me address the question that's come in from Mark Smith at Pipeline Technique. He asks on, on the 10 inch line in your example with the uh, hydrogen induced stress cracking, um, on the anode pads, was the Toft inspection also used at the pad locations? Uh, yes, yes, exactly for the pad locations. I think um, we we could see the, the pads already, of course, in the wall thickness data, so on the way in, um, on the forward run, and then we stopped exactly at this position uh, on the return run, and um, typically, I think, uh, yeah, you can, because you can see the data, you can move the tool, stop the tool, uh, maybe um, centimeter with centimeter accuracy, but then we can move the Toft unit on the tool module um, forward, backward a little bit so that you really in millimeter accuracy, you can um, have the right location for the Toft measurement. And that gives you a very precise uh, measurement of these cracks, yeah. Fantastic, thank you. And another question from Jacinto Ramirez at Echo Patrol, um, asking about the, the limitations. So what, what is the maximum depth um, properly TRL qualified for this? Uh, yeah, because we our tool um, in the pipeline, there's probably uh, no, um, no pressure at all, or maybe it's just the water pressure uh, from the tool itself. Uh, the tool itself can handle high pressure. Um, I think on the on the stuffing box, uh, we can even have uh, several bars. As I said, it was tested with more than 100 bar. Um, but uh, I think so far we haven't uh, inspected really um, deep sea uh, lines. Uh, but in principle, all the parts of the tool are um, pressure tested and we can have, uh, yeah, can stand very high, high pressure even um, in deep sea. Great, thank you. And another question from Arthur Marshall at Sonomatic. Um, he asks about um, whether there is a need to inspect every uh, weld on the run. Yeah, that is um, the reason why we typically use the, the share wave module as well. So the angular beam technology for crack detection. This is very sensitive for detecting the cracks, but not good for sizing. And therefore on the way in where we do the geometry and wall thickness measurement, we also use the share wave technology for detection of the cracks. And then we know exactly on the way back if we have to stop really at every girth weld or if we only stop at, uh, uh, at these locations where we have detected something with a share wave and then go with a with a toft there. So, um, I think there were some inspections where we have inspected all the girth welds, uh, and especially if we have no share wave technology with us at the at this run, then we have to stop with all the toft uh, at all the girth welds. But typically, we only stop where we have detected with share wave some serious, um, yeah, crack-like defects. 
Very smart. Very good. So I, I guess you only know after the run in how long the reverse run is going to take? Um, yeah, I think the, typically after the forward run, uh, I think we stop for a few minutes just to download all the data. And uh, we, we then already know where we have to stop on the way back. And then we uh, move backwards uh, for the return run and can immediately stop at the right positions. Perfect. In challenging uh, pipelines like this, when, when it's not really possible to, to pig, how do you address the pre-cleaning, uh, the pre-inspection cleaning? <laughs> yeah, very good. I think, um, of course, there are a few pipelines where you can use bi-directional pigs, but then you have to pump from both sides. Um, forward, backward. Uh, I, I assume that we, we have only um, pipelines uh, where we have access only from one side. This is the typical uh, yeah, situation for us. If we have a pipeline where we can uh, launch cleaning picks at A and take them out at B, then of course it's easy. Then we clean it as normal and conventional pipelines. But typically we have only access from one side and then we have to go in and pump uh, by the picks to the end and then back. And for this kind of, of cleaning uh, situation, we use special um, um, called LCP picks um, from uh, Rosen, uh, which are less aggressive on the forward run and more aggressive on the backward run so because you want to have all the shit out in the in the launcher or receiver at the end and not at the end of the pipeline maybe in front of the manifold and this works quite well uh, we also have developed um, something um, which we can use on our tool uh, it is uh, something like like um, axial wheels and uh, with these wheels we can for example break um, some hard scale and, and this is then falling down and then we can um, uh, have much better data in general we can say uh, our tool is a little bit less sensitive to to uh, wax and, and paraffin uh, because the sensor carrier is not scratching on the wall uh, only the wheels are running on the wall and the sensors and the sensor carrier have a certain uh, liftoff or, or standoff and therefore it is typically not clocked with, with wax as when you have a conventional ultrasonic tool which you pull through a pipeline or pump through a pipeline then this is really scratching the wax from the surface and then all the sensors are clocked with, with wax. So we are in a much better situation with our stiff sensor carrier ring with some standoff. Perfect. Thank you, Uli. I'm, I'm going to squeeze in a very quick question, if, if we can get a quick answer, <laughs> from yeah. Oleg Arafef at, at Care for Energy, um, just asking about mitre bands. Is it possible to navigate those with these? Yeah, we had some mitre bands, but I think, um, let's say, if we have only one cut and 90 degree, this is not possible. That is maybe possible for a foam pick, but not for, for us. But if we have maybe two cuts for 90 degree, that was already handled. Um, it is not too bad for the tool itself, but especially um, maybe if you lost control um, on the on the um, uh, crawler on the way back, and then you have to pull with a the cable, then you would damage the cable. That's the worst thing. Yeah. But principle, we can even handle some mitre bands. That's clear. <laughs> Thank you so much, Uli, for the great presentation and discussion afterwards. Yeah was great for me as well. All the best. Thanks, Lily.